Chris Black, SC Animation, and Max DJ's Workshop all requested that I do Pterodactyl. I don't have a Pterodactyl, but I have a Pteranodon. So we're going to talk about Pteranodon. Uh, incidentally, uh, Pterodactyl is not the name of Pterodactylus, the genus. Uh, so people tend to use pterodactyl to mean any pterosaur, and specifically they'll refer to pteranodon as a pterodactyl, especially in America, because it's an American dinosaur. Also, it's ten times larger than a pterodactyl, so it's clearly better. Um, so you could make a case that pterodactyl would refer to any pterosaur. Science certainly did that for a while there. Disclaimer, it was not a dinosaur. It was an archosaur, which I'm told, I, I've been pronouncing that wrong, I keep saying archosaur, but it's archosaur, which makes complete sense because of the word root. I just never thought about it. It generally gets lumped in with dinosaurs in the popular consciousness, and unlike with, you know, Dimetrodon or Woolly Mammoth or whatever, it actually makes sense to lump pterosaurs in with dinosaurs because, you know, first off, they were phylogenetically very close. They were archosaurs that were arguably closer to dinosaurs than to crocodiles. The current theory is that they were ornithodirans. They emerged as highly specialized uh, archosaurs during the early to mid-Triassic, became extremely specialized and very large uh, by the late Cretaceous, and then died off in the, the KT extinction event. So, they're not dinosaurs, but it's, they're technically not dinosaurs, whereas a lot of creatures that get lumped in there, you would be like, no, that is clearly not a dinosaur. Close. Speaking of the KT extinction event, that's when a big ol' asteroid smashed into Mexico and killed most life on Earth. You've probably heard about it. That's why we're here. This toy is extremely inaccurate. Uh, I'm not sure where to start about telling you what's wrong with it, but I could tell you what's right about it. Um, it does have an accurate number of fingers and toes. It has, uh, well, kind of. It seems to be lacking wing fingers, but it has three uh, normal carpal, uh, metacarpals and four toes on each foot. Uh, its feet are plantigrade which is they're, they're walking on their heels, which is what they did. Uh, the, it, it doesn't have teeth. You'll frequently see Pteranodon portrayed with teeth just to make it more fearsome. No, the, the name Pteranodon means toothless wing or wing without teeth because uh, they had to work the Ptero in there. But this one doesn't have teeth, so that's cool. Uh, Oh, the head is more or less perpendicular to the neck and the body, which is also accurate. They carried their heads down, as opposed to, like, straight out. You'll see uh, Pteranodon portrayed with its head straight out, like in Ajdarkid or whatever, but... Mm, uh, oh, right, and it's, it's covered in uh, this fur-like thing. The term is pinka fibers. They're, they're dense... Filaments. I don't know if they're analogous to the protofeathers that you see in dinosaurs and other archosaurs, but they're visually similar. Uh, I also don't know, I don't think anyone really knows, uh, the extent to which Pteranodon would have been covered in these things. It would have been useful for uh, a marine creature to have uh, complete coverage, but we're, we're just not sure. Not a lot of soft tissue for Pteranodon in particular. To get into what's wrong with it, I guess we should start with posture, because that's the first thing that strikes me. There would be very little reason for Pteranodon to ever strike this particular pose, where it's on its hind legs, but on the ground with its wings outstretched. First off, when it was on the ground, it was quadrupedal. So the toy maker really can't be excused for giving it a tripodal stance. I, un I, I sort of understand giving a theropod a tripodal stance, because there's sort of a, uh, a restorative, restorative precedent for that, but Pteranodon would be a quadruped if it was on the ground, and I suppose you can make the case that, oh, it's actually supposed to be flying, but if it's supposed to be flying, why didn't you just make the feet out backwards like it's flying? Why would you make it able to be stood up at all? 
Oh, and you might argue that it would strike this pose if it was trying to like take off. No. Uh, Pteranodon, all pterosaurs, the, the current theory based on their biomechanics is that they, because they were quadrupeds on the ground, they would have launched not with their weak little hind limbs, but with their extremely powerful forelimbs, which is completely different to anything else that's flying around today, where they push themselves into the air. They actually had something approaching, like the, the tendon in their wrist was really crazy, and it, it, it was almost a catapult, or a, I guess technically it would be an onager. Uh, in each wrist to launch itself into the air and then bring its arms up and then flap down to, to get completely airborne. And it, it, that's really cool and it's completely not reflected in this toy. And you might ask, how do I know that they were quadrupedal when they were on the ground? Aside from the fact that paleontologists told me so. Uh, we have trackways from this creature. And I always get a little excited about footprints, but in this case it's cool because Initially, we thought that these particular trackways were from like crocodiles, but upon further analysis, it's a pterosaur walking on its wings. And the hands were on the ground, but the wing finger was held aloft. And then the body would have been almost erect, especially for long-winged creatures like, like Pteranodon. Uh, and another thing from the trackways is the stride. Uh, they were not slow on their feet, like, like a lot of portrayals are. They, 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 they could get a decent stride on the ground. They weren't exactly graceful, but they could move. So regarding the scaling of the creature, for starters the wings are way too small. We're going to transition to, into how it would be proportioned if it were flying, by the way, because on the ground you don't see the geometry so well. But the head is too small also. The body is too big and the head is too small. So. Head should be as long as the neck and the body put together. The neck should be about equal length with the body. And then the legs should be another body length. Altogether, like, based on the crest, I would assume this is an adult and a female. So we're looking at a five foot creature or the size of a large albatross. Whereas if it were male, it would be a lot bigger. It would have, as opposed to a 12 foot wingspan for a female, a 20 foot wingspan for a male and probably eight feet long. So that's like the size of a giant pteratorn. Okay, more like a medium pteratorn. And if you don't know what a pteratorn is, what are you doing with your life? There was a place to see vulture, it was huge. Just look it up, I'll probably put a link somewhere. Meanwhile, the tail. They have, in order to give it the fallacious freaking tripod stance. They have given it this absurdly long, it's not even a rampharynchid tail because it's all snaky. So Pteranodon's tail, it was a pterodactyloid, which among other things means that its tail was very small. Uh, it also wouldn't have been very flexible. The, the anterior half of it would have been pretty flexible, but the posterior half was just this one solid rod. And we're not sure why, um, as a pterodactyloid, it had membranes between the uh, legs, but we're not sure if the membranes went all the way to the tip of the tail or maybe just stopped at the base of the tail. Just not sure. It, it would be cool if like the rod was part of the flight membrane and that was like a control surface. That would be cool. Um, I mentioned the head earlier. It should have the bill curved upwards. Not, not down like it is, and, and it should, the top bill should be significantly longer than the bottom bill. And this might be because it's a toy and they don't want to put a bunch of sharp points on it, but it, 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 it was a really sharp point on the end of a pteranodon's bill. The eyes are a little too far down and a little too far, I know that it looks like they're sort of not even in the head anymore, but the pterosaur skulls are weird. They should practically be in the crest, like they should be up and back. Uh, and it has eyebrow ridges. Eyebrow ridges. Get rid of those. No eyebrow ridges. And I've been saving the wings for last because that's the first thing that struck me when I looked at this. The wings are terrible. This has sort of two sickles nailed to the sides of its body, and there's a lot wrong with that. Uh, First off, they should just be bigger. The, the 
I mentioned scale earlier, 20 foot wings on an eight foot creature, that's a really high, they call it aspect ratio for, for flying creatures and for airplanes. I also mentioned albatross earlier for scaling. Albatross is a really apt comparison because not only was it, I mean, albatrosses are heavy gliders like Pteranodon. Um, lifestyle wise, it was also similar to an albatross, at least as far as we figure, because we mostly find it in um, what was the interior North American seaway uh, during the Cretaceous. And we find them in areas where they would have been hundreds of miles offshore in some cases. So these were very much marine creatures, uh, uh, like an albatross. It has these sharp tips on the end. It, it should have rounded tips because it messes up the aerodynamics. As far as how they're attached to the legs, these have a, this toy has it stopping at the knee, essentially, which could be accurate. We're not sure where it, where it attached. It, it definitely did sort of a sharp turn down when it attached to the legs, but it might have attached to the ankle for all we know. I think ankle sounds cooler, especially since that makes the uh, membrane in between the legs a lot uh, more relevant. It appears to completely lack a wing finger, and that's a problem. <laughs> the The arms altogether are just incorrect. They they it's sort of a bat up until you hit the wrist, and that's not good. Instead of having the long radius, it should have a long carpal. In fact, the carpal was longer than the radius. Uh, uh, really, not this sharp, almost right angle transition from the arm to wing. It was, it was very gradual. And the fingers should not be pointing at a right angle. They should be outwards. In fact, the first finger was the shortest. They sort of increased in length as you went. The first finger was short, second finger a little longer, third finger a little longer, fourth finger as long as the rest of the arm put together. It also, it has a membrane on the leading edge of the wing in front of the arm, but it, does, it seems to lack a, a pteroid bone to be controlling it. That's a bone unique to pterosaurs. We're not sure what it uh, corresponds to in other creatures, if anything. Uh, it could be a metacarpal, it could be a carpal. Uh, it controlled the leading edge of the wing, so it's really important for a flying creature. One more note on the fingers. They might have been webbed. We're not sure. Uh, other pterosaurs have webbed fingers and webbed toes. Uh, pterodactyl had webbed toes, I'm pretty sure. It's also committing this fallacy that you see everywhere about pterosaurs, that they were sort of skin and bones, basically a flying kite. Not true. They were heavily muscular. Uh, uh, this wouldn't have had to, you know, jump off cliffs to take off. It wouldn't have had to, like, wait for the right wind to be able to sort of lazily drift into the air. It was a powered flyer. It was a very heavy flyer, actually. A lot more of its muscle mass was in its arms than, well, arms and legs, uh, than a corresponding weight-wise terrestrial creature would have had, just because its arms and legs were so much longer. The breathing apparatus on these guys would not have been as we know it with a diaphragm breathe in breathe out it would be more like a bird where it's sort of a pump that continuously circulates air throughout a bunch of sacs and, and airways throughout the creature that sort of acted as a transition between the hard surfaces the bones and the and the tendons and the muscles of the the arms and the the actual flight surfaces of the wings. So there was no hard defining line between arm and wing. It was, it was a wing is probably, if you take one thing away from this video, it's that. It wasn't these leathery flaps of skin either. The, the structure of the wing, we don't have any living analogs and we have just tantalizing evidence of whenever you see like shale or, or the, the Bavarian quarries keep turning up these uh, uh, trace fossils of, of crushed skeletons with, with the, the, the membrane still visible in the rock. And we're so unclear about how they actually went together. There's um, these fibers that go on the, the, the further you get from the creature, the, you see these fibers radiating out towards the edges of the wing. Uh, there's a specific name for them that I'm blanking on, but they're these dense little radiating fibers. Uh, they, they sort of look like coarse hairs, but really long. So it would be, I don't know how rigid it was. Nobody really knows how rigid they would have been. They would have deformed under load because that's the nature of having wings made of flesh. 
but not these bat-like membranes that you usually see on the, the reconstructions. I forgot to mention the feet. They're, uh, they're not bad, incidentally. Like I said, they have the accurate number of toes, but uh, the toes should get longer the further from the center of the creature you get. Uh, and the back of the foot didn't have quite as much of a pad as they're showing on this. Uh, it would have been more triangular, I suppose. Again, this is referencing the trackways. I think that's all I can think of to say about Pteranodon. Uh, I hope this answered your pterodactyl-related questions as well. Thank you for watching Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, uh, suggest dinosaurs for me to talk about. You could even send me a toy dinosaur. Uh, our address is in the description. Uh, go to thegeekgroup.org to find out how you can become a member or donate. We'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon. Not these bat-like membrane. Not these bat-like membranes that you usually see on the, the reconstructions. It wasn't actually anywhere close to falling off the table.